This trip to the countryside will be good for you, Holmes. Hmm. As your friend and your doctor, I really do recommend that you give yourself a complete change of scene. Fresh air, brisk walks, bird watching, chopping wood. Sounds intolerable. I mean, certainly it sounds delightful. But you haven't yet told me who your friend is. The one we're going to visit. He is a bee lover. A bee lover? Do you mean that he keeps bees? That must be Mrs. Hudson, bringing the warm cloth that I requested. There is someone to see you, Mr. Holmes. I have no time. Send whoever it is away. Yes, Holmes, I really think we ought to leave now. Mycroft. Oh. Sherlock. Oh, uh, Mr. Holmes? Perhaps you don't remember me. I'm Dr. Watson. Uh, we met at the Diogenes Club a few years ago. I documented our encounter in a short story I gave the title The Greek Interpreter. He does remember you, Watson. My brother remembers everything, and that is why he is so valuable to the government. We are about to depart for the train station. I know. You know? Sherlock, I need your help. There are people who presently threaten both our country and the Crown itself. You must help us with those methods of yours. Need? Help? Those are not words I would readily associate with you, Mycroft. I wrote you a letter, but you did not reply. And this is not about politics. It's about people. People similar to those whom you pretend to defend in your petty detective affairs. Everything is about politics with you, Mycroft. I'm not interested. Have some of your agents, your spies, or worse, undertake this job of yours. You are defending your people, and they have little to do with the people I choose to help, I can assure you. That is the point. You think exactly as they do. Who are they? The Merry Men. He is talking about the Merry Men. A band of idealistic terrorists. Sherlock, do please think about it. They are planning something diabolical. Your country needs you. You need me, Mycroft, and you are not the country. Although if your waistline expands very much further... Mrs. Hudson, tea will not be necessary. Dr. Watson, the train conductor, Mr. Parker, is aware that you will be seven minutes late. You are in the fourth car. The train will be waiting for you. Sherlock, enjoy your time in Staffordshire. And do, please, at least write to me on your return. Holmes, please call a cab while I pack my suitcase. We shall be late for the train. Look after Mrs. Hudson for us, Toby. Watson, I'll hold a cab for us. We leave in five minutes for the station. Brr, what a gloomy night. It was warmer inside the waiting hall. Since the station master told us that the train is about to arrive, we should not have to wait very much longer. Yes, at last. Attention, the train is arriving at the station. Please stand well away from the platform edge. I'll take your bags and your blasted archive suitcase.
But, Holmes, the headlight, it's faded away. Something is wrong. I can't hear any sound from the incoming train. Excuse me, sir. Can you explain what has happened? I, I don't know. It, it's as if the train vanished into thin air. Holmes, say something. Quick, fetch a lantern and let us take a look. It's too dark. Only fog and rails, nothing else. Uh, there is no use in stumbling around here at night. We will come back tomorrow. Well, here we are again at Evesham Station. We have a full day ahead. Let us begin our investigation. place where we saw the train vanish last night. Railway sleepers. Nothing unusual. A discarded item, possibly thrown from the train. There are no tracks or footprints on the ground. The rails have not been touched. There's nothing unusual here. There are no signs to indicate that the train ran off the track, nor are there any other traces. There is nothing whatsoever. There are no clues. But then, a negative result is also a result. Oh, I see what you're getting at. No clues and you're smiling. Yes, Watson, I do smile on occasion. This mystery appears very promising. This investigation won't be simple. We shall require a map of the region. Perhaps the station master could lend us one. Good morning. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Sherlock Holmes, and this is my friend and colleague, Dr. Watson. Yes, I remember you. I'm Station Master Everett. You were here last night. So, you are Mr. Holmes, the great detective. Will you be investigating what happened? I shall indeed. It is extraordinary that an entire train could disappear like that. And to think of all the poor people inside it, the passengers, the driver, Could you please give us any details about the train? Well, there was nothing so very special about it. At least not that I can recall. My memory's not what it used to be. <laughs> However, if you need it, you can have the train composition report. It's inside my office. I would be glad to have a detailed map of the local railway district. But of course, please, take the one that's pinned inside the waiting hall. See you later, my good man. This map will be useful.
a new telegram. I think we should meet this, Mr. Robinson. Here is the train set. A telegraph. According to the train composition report, there was a special wagon. What does that entail? That's a highly secure car, ordered by a private party. Uh, it is generally to carry something of value. Uh, those wagons have iron walls, you know, without any windows. Uh, and they're fitted with a complex key lock. That is important information. Do you know what was inside this particular wagon? Certainly not. No, that's private. And it's not my responsibility to allot the wagons to whoever. Was there anything exceptional about any of the passengers aboard the train? What do you mean? Like officials? Oh, I wouldn't know. Oh, oh, but now that you mention it, yes, there was something. There was a message from Bridlington Station saying that the train had been delayed because of an issue with the passengers. But what kind of problem that they didn't say? That is interesting. You mentioned a problem at Bridlington Station. I should like to visit this station. Could you mark it on the local map? Of course. It's a suburban railway station. You might take a cab there. See you later, my good man. This is an absolute scandal. It's always the same with these rail companies. No respect for the customer. Please calm down, sir. What is your concern? Concern? What is my concern? I'll tell you what my concern is. Last night, I were on the train, as usual, with my colleague, heading home. Then along came this ridiculous ticket inspector, who started arguing that our tickets were invalid. He made us get off the train, and he was extremely rude about it. Were you aboard the train that vanished last night? Yes. I heard that it disappeared, but I don't care because we would have stopped before then anyway. Our tickets were valid and no doubt about it. And then, to top it all, the ticket inspector pushed everyone else out too, except for a bunch of rich. Well, of course their type don't need a ticket. Can you recall anything more specific about this fortunate group? Well, yes. They were all foreigners. Spanish-looking toffs with snake eyes. Goodbye, sir. Good day to you, sir. Good day. To whom am I speaking? My name is Sherlock Holmes, and this is... Are you a representative of this damned railway company? Because I have a complaint. We are not from the railway company. We are... Well... 
In that case, Mr Shamrock Flomes, please excuse me, but I'm not in the mood for idle chit-chat at the moment. You must be Mr. Robinson, is that correct? Yes. I am leading the investigation of the disappearing train. It would help if you could answer my questions. Ah, well, all right. I have nothing to hide. I presume it was you who placed the order for the special wagon. Yes. It was to transport my valuable prototype safely to London. My prototype is a revolutionary device. It is capable of producing electricity. I'm a businessman and an engineer. I had already found several potential customers for my invention, but I was very optimistic about the director's board who were traveling on the train last night. You mentioned a director's board. Which company do they own? The Chilean Barcazas Company. I had made an appointment with them. Now they are lost, along with the train and my prototype. What do you know about the Barcazis Company? It's a large South American company. They showed a great deal of interest in my prototype, and they seemed wealthy enough to do business with. Hmm. This revolutionary machine of yours, was it very valuable? For God's sake, sir. It is priceless. It could change the world we live in. And yet, I was selling it for almost nothing. I am a humanitarian, you see. I do not know if I will ever be able to get over this disaster. I cannot believe that it disappeared with that damn train. Mr. Robinson, could you please clarify? Were you travelling alongside your prototype? Yes, I was. But I had to step off the train. And all because of this stupid station master. I received the telegram declaring that an important person, a Mr. Bromsby, wished to see you in the waiting room. I, I merely informed you of this. Mr. Bromsby is a wealthy gentleman. His interest in my invention was truly unexpected. So yes, of course, I agreed to see him. Unfortunately, he wasn't there. I thought perhaps he might have been delayed. So I chose to wait a while. But despite my requests, the train left the station without me. Absolutely unacceptable! The timetable is strict. We cannot wait any longer. The regulations require the train to be on time. You are an idiot! You will pay for it! I will sue you! The ticket inspector forced all the passengers from the train, except for the directors of the Barcazas Chilean Company. Good day to you, gentlemen. How may I help you? Good day to you, sir. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I am investigating the unfortunate disappearance of last night's train. I see. Uh, I'm Station Master Bertram, but my supervisor has not informed me about this. I do not know if... Uh, do not worry. I have only a few questions. Station Master Everett from Evesham told us that you reported a problem with some passengers last night. Indeed. This train is a regular line for those who work at Nottingham. But yesterday, everyone was asked to get off the train here at my station. I've no idea why, and it delayed the train. But the worst of it is that now I have to deal with two furious passengers who are complaining about the company's service. They stayed here the whole night. But people do not usually pay much attention to the regulations, you see. There are very strict and clear rules. Paragraph 234 of Article 2G-43 states that in the event of a complaint, you must... Yes, yes, thank you. I understand.
Apart from the passengers disembarking, did you notice anything else that was unusual last night? I did, and I mentioned it in my report to our higher management on the matter. What was it? Sorry, but I can't tell you. The station master's reports are confidential. Confidential, you say? How long have you been working here? I have worked here long enough to be uh, quite capable of managing a railway station. Let me speak frankly, Mr. Bertram. Your age and your lack of confidence in your position are quite apparent. You cannot deny that you have only recently completed your studies. I was at the top of my class. Listen here, young man. I am aware that you wish to protect yourself behind all these regulations, but I represent the law. And you are obstructing the investigation of an important case. I would suggest that you cooperate with Mr. Holmes. Think of your career. Ah, that is... Well, I'll tell you everything. First of all, I scolded the ticket inspector, for it was he who asked the passengers to leave the train. It was not his right to do so. He was very rude. And then, later on, I received a most peculiar telegram from my colleague at Chesterfield Station, the next stop along the line. What did the telegram say? Well, that was the peculiar thing. It was almost unreadable. It was full of errors and awfully vague. It was hard to understand if the train had correctly passed that station or not. You can read it for yourself. We ought to visit Chesterfield Station. We need to confirm if the station master saw the train or not. insurance policy for Robinson's machine, a significant sum. According to this document, you have insurance for your prototype. Oh, thank God. Where did you find it? Near the telegraph station. I must have lost it when I tried to send a message, which I was prevented from doing. I apologize for that, but regulations state that public access to the telegraph is strictly prohibited. Upon my word, you keep on digging that hole of yours. You have no idea who I am. I see that you kept your grip sack with you. Why don't you leave it in the luggage room? I've had other things to think about. I lost my prototype. And this idiot station master just stands here doing nothing to help. Oh, but... Well, that won't do at all. Station master, I believe that the regulations state that any passenger luggage should be taken to the luggage room. I'll do it right away, sir. Sorry, sir. This Robinson is quite a character. We should learn more about him. Railway post bags.
This gripsack belongs to Mr. Robinson. I think we should open it, Holmes. This is what they call force majeure. I'll keep watch. Of course. Look, Watson, a bundle of contracts. Very suspicious. We should study them carefully. An exclusive sales contract. Mr. Robinson is the seller. Yet another exclusive sales contract. Mr. Robinson is the seller. Yet another exclusive sales contract. Mr. Robinson is the seller. Yet another exclusive sales contract. Mr. Robinson is the seller. Well, it is very clear that this Mr. Robinson received prepayments from various people for his machine. This bin is full of empty bottles. A fishing advertisement. I had thought that all station masters knew the Morse code, but apparently not. How could he fall asleep at work like this? Excuse me, sir. Wake up. Ah, his breath. He must have swallowed half a distillery. And that explains the how. By his sleeping off the alcohol, you mean? Wake up, please, huh? sir. What? The 18 hours 72 train has arrived? Good day to you. We are investigating the disappearance of last night's train, and we should like to ask you a few questions. Were there any passengers who got off that particular train at your station last night? No. Nobody, it seems to me. Although I did not leave my office, so... No doubt you were very busy. You don't say. You can't ever get any peace around here. Now ah, you have to send a telegram each time a train arrives and departs. Oop.
The station master Bertram from Bridlington showed me a strange telegram that he received from you last night. It concerned the train, but it was barely comprehensible. What? He's a fastidious little twerp, that Bertram. I remember everything quite clearly. It was late, and I was tired, but I did my work. So what? There's no need to be so petty. You were not tired, you were inebriated. Tell me the truth now, or I shall not hesitate to document your state in my report. My friend means that you will end up by being sacked from your position. All right. So I was drunk. I don't remember all of yesterday, to be truthful to you. Please don't go harsh on me. Holmes, this man has consumed a considerable amount of alcohol. He's not entirely helpless yet, but... It will not be long before he is. Obviously, his testimony cannot be trusted. locked. There is no sense in asking the station master to open it. We shall have to pick the lock. Post bags. These tools were used quite recently. They are still muddy. We should ask about them. Bags were recently dragged here. French wine, a remarkable vintage. These bottles are too expensive for a station master's wage. They were likely taken from the parcels. Shameful. A handcar wheelbase. Interesting. It appears that elements of the same construction were scattered everywhere. Watson, please tell me, do you believe in magic? Of course not, Holmes. Then you are of the opinion that a train cannot simply disappear? Well, we both know that that is obvious. Why are you asking such peculiar questions? A little patience, Watson. You will understand my point quite soon. So, are you quite certain that you saw the train at Evesham Station? Yes, of course. We saw it coming. The headlights and heard the whistle. But that is it. We didn't see the train itself. Oh, uh, but... Oh, Holmes, I'm a little confused. You have quite a number of dirty tools lying around here. Ah, yes. Well, thank you for reminding me. I should clean them. Although, it might be easier to put them outside. Seems it might start raining soon. I meant, what were they used for? Some workers come here and borrowed them from me. They wanted to lift the edge of the railway to one of the stations on the line, so that the water wouldn't come in too close. 
Who were these workers? Well, they didn't seem to be from the company, but they was fine lads. They invited me to share a drink. <laughs> and whatever it was, it had a kick to it. They wasn't English. No, I don't believe so. But see, they knew just what a man needed to brighten up his dull evening. I should use the appropriate object here. So, now here we have the fake train that we saw approaching Evesham Station last night. Doesn't look much like a train to me. Be patient, Watson. I haven't finished yet. Try using your imagination. Our train requires only a headlight and a steam whistle.
The long pole is now attached. It will allow us to connect the headlight. The headlight is attached. The steam whistle is now connected. Holmes, what can we do to make the steam whistle work? It is elementary, my dear Watson. We shall need a fire extinguisher. The fire extinguisher. Now let us see what we have here. The steam whistle is ready to be used. Watson, I do believe that we have created an exact replica of the train that vanished in front of us last night. The criminal mind can be most inventive. I am somewhat in awe. So, such a thing is possible. If someone went to all the trouble of creating this fake train, then it was surely with the intention of stealing the real one. Ah, Watson, you should not jump to conclusions. In fact, this does not tell us very much at all, except that the train did not evaporate into thin air. Although you half suspected it. Ah, at any rate, we now need to find where the real train might be hidden. I suggest we use my archives to find a more detailed map of our surroundings. Well, I hope that justifies our having to load your massive archive suitcase onto the cab. It made us extremely unpopular with our driver. Now we have two maps. We must combine them properly. Here it is. There is a side branch to the railway. Its first switch is located between Bridlington and Chesterfield stations. There is one more station to be visited. It is located between Chesterfield and Evesham and there should be a side railway to the nearby quarry. There is a small section of a railway at the end of Evesham Station. Rusted, but it still works. Mines. This is interesting. for someone to redirect the train towards the mines. Here are the mines, Holmes. They appear to be abandoned. This is an administrative panel. See what it says. This is an information sign. It might contain some useful data. We should restore it. Watson. You are a gentleman, 
and gentlemen tend to carry handkerchiefs. Might I borrow yours? And where is your own? I haven't the faintest idea. Very well. Here it is. W.E.A. Coal. These mines belong to them. A lightly loaded vehicle came this way. The distance between the tracks is about four feet eight inches. There is a wooden beam lying on the rails. A small vehicle with wooden beams went down this way. This mine has completely collapsed, Holmes. It is curious, but to be truthful, I am not entirely surprised. It's difficult to follow you, Holmes. Someone removed these screws, most probably to take down the rails. A few feet of the rails have been dismantled. This is an unusual kind of paper, stiff and dry. It was used for a specific purpose. Let us look inside. Sawdust. I am almost certain it is a... Watson, could you assist, please? Do you have your pistol? Good. Fire at this package. Dynamite. This box must be the safe. Let's open it. The Mexican company Caracal and the Chilean Barcazas both want to buy the mines. I need more information. Perhaps Mycroft could help.
There was a building here not so long ago. But I don't understand, Holmes. Why would anyone destroy the shed in such a manner? It was disassembled in great haste. It is most odd. Traces. Let's take a closer look. The vehicle would have been heavy, as these tracks are quite deep. The distance between the tracks is about 6 feet 7 inches. These traces are relatively fresh and were made by a large truck loaded with materials. This road should lead to the town of Evesham. It appears that there was a small warehouse near your station and that it was disassembled. Why is that? It was burgled overnight about two weeks ago. The police have already started their investigation, but I doubt that they'll find anything. What was inside the warehouse? Nothing of value. A few hundred feet of standby rails and some spare railway parts. But it wouldn't be easy to steal all of that. Why would anyone want to? See you later, my good man. I asked Mycroft to find out some information on the WEA Coal Company. Here is his reply, and it is an interesting one. A funny character. He looks anxious. And he is not an Englishman. Hmm. This scent is familiar to me. But in order to recognize it, I must combine my associations into one picture. A greenish-brown cigar with a strong aroma, a hint of peppermint. Ricardo. You already know the name of this man? Holmes, you amaze me. 
No, Watson, I refer to the cigar. It is a Ricardo Turrent, a Mexican cigar of an excellent quality. Quite an expensive one, too. This ashtray is full of ash and cigar stubs. Apparently, there was a conflict between the Mexicans and the Chileans. This ashtray is full of ash and cigar stubs. A greenish-brown cigar with a strong aroma, a hint of peppermint. These ashes and cigar stubs are similar to the one that we found on the floor. Some of the stubs were recently smoked. There are others that appear fairly old. That means that the fellow spent several days here. Judging by his clothes, he's hardly a traveler or a tramp. Well concluded, my dear fellow. A man who smoked the Ricardo brand of Mexican cigar spent several long days at Doncaster Station. Newspaper articles on horse racing, hurdles, steeplechase, and flat racing. He is a true enthusiast, Holmes. Betting slips for horse racing. The sums are quite impressive. It can be an expensive vice. This man had probably used all his savings. A telegraph. Holmes, look. There's a flooded area over here. Hmm. I believe that the flooded area might be worth checking. Railway post bags. This post bag belongs to the station master. The station master appears to have found himself in some financial trouble. Good day to you, sir. My name is Sherlock Holmes, and this is Dr. John Watson. We are investigating the case of the vanished train. Is that so? Well, good day, gentlemen. I am Mr. Duff, the station master of this station. I'll be happy to help you in any way I can, but 
There's not much that I can tell you about last night. It appears that you may be at risk of some flooding along the line here. You mean that the whole bloody lake is at our feet? Quite so. But it is strange, because according to my map, there should be a quarry here, and behind that, the lake. How should I know? I only arrived here a few months ago. And where did you work before that? Well, I was working in Nottingham. But I asked for a quieter place, so they transferred me here. Life is cheaper. I can't really complain. Did any passengers leave or board the train last night? No. I saw no one as usual. I reported the train's passage by telegraph. Just the same as all the other nights. I observe that you are a gambling man, Mr. Duff. You had hoped that your relocation to this small town might have helped ease your addiction, but it was not to be. I beg your pardon? Addiction to what? We found a number of horse racing tickets inside your office. Well, well, we all have our weaknesses. An expensive obsession, surely, for a station master. It is none of your business. I... Occasionally attend the races with my colleagues. And anyway, that's my private life. There was a gentleman of Mexican origin, I believe, in the waiting room. Did you notice him? What? A Mexican? Here in the back of beyond? Are you quite sure about that? Goodbye, sir. It is obvious that we cannot inspect the quarry. Instead, we can check the beach area around the flooded lake. Watson, it seems that both South American companies were involved in the purchase of the mine. The man at Doncaster who fled our approach, he smokes Mexican cigars. Perhaps... Yes, Watson. We should certainly speak with him. Please, sir, we would ask you not to leave. We have some questions. Are you the police? No, we are employed by the railway company. We are collecting witness statements about the train that disappeared last night. Lo siento, I'm in a hurry. Really? It seemed that you were waiting here for someone. Could you tell us if you were at the station last night? No, I just arrived from South America. A formidable journey, no doubt. Which country are you from? De Chile. Chile, but you are Mexican. No, you are wrong. Why would you think I'm Mexican? Because of your cigars. Si, cigarrillos. So what? Those cigars are the Ricardo brand, from Mexico. It is quite impossible to find them anywhere but there. Pero not your business. I don't suppose that you are on vacation. What business brought you here? I was to meet my fellow compañeros. Where did you arrive yesterday? They were on that dumb train. I will stay here and hope that the authorities find them. Or their bodies. It's now my responsibility 
to repatriate them. Who authorized you to do that? The company I work for. Could you tell me the name of the company? It's not your concern. And what is your name? Enough questions. When I start this. Not a very friendly man, and he is lying. He said that he just arrived, but we know that he has been here for several days. This railway branch should lead to the quarry. Let us take a look. The switch is rusted, but it's... The rail is rusted and looks old, but the railway is still usable. The railway ends here. That is strange. Here we are at the beach that is located near the quarry and Doncaster station. It doesn't look like a very good place to rest. These traces were made by a carriage. Look. The vehicle would have been heavy as these tracks are quite deep. The distance between the tracks is about six feet, seven inches. The vehicle pressed this stone into the ground. It would have been quite heavy. These traces are relatively fresh and were made by a large truck loaded with materials. The traces found at the disassembled shed near Evesham and at the lake were from the same vehicle. an advertisement for lake cruises. An abandoned gypsy caravan. This place was abandoned fairly recently. Observing the coastline and the moored boats, we are able to see that the lake's water level dropped. The lake has flooded the quarry.
the dam was probably breached. A label with the name Las Zarpas. Here it is. All these trains and railway stations, Chileans, Mexicans, and Robinson with his prototype at Holmes, I'm utterly lost.
Then the case is solved, Holmes. What do you intend to do? Well, I shall require assistance for the arrests. There were accomplices. Ah, but I know that look. You have your own ideas. What are they, Holmes? On the one hand, we have Mycroft and his tedious political games. He will locate the guilty parties without any trouble. But it will be a long and drawn-out process, and possibly with some compromise that will be to Mycroft's benefit. Our other option is the local constabulary, and advice from our friend Lestrade. The problem we have there is that the authorities seem to be incapable of acting quietly. They rely on brute force. It could result in an international scandal. All the same, I think that I prefer the forces methods. It would be better to resolve the case quickly and efficiently without any talk of politics. Let us go home, then. I'd like to begin writing a draft of this story. No, I did not say that we had finished here yet. Well, all right. What did I miss? Watson, we know that the Barcazas Company directors were drowned in the flooded quarry, along with the train and Robinson's prototype. But we still need to corner the guilty party. But how do you intend to prove... Oh, no. Please don't tell me we have to dive into the lake. Huh. You may rest assured that I have a far better idea. We have only to use our corrupt Doncaster Station Master as bait. He will unwittingly trap our Mexican friend. Of course, you already had a plan. I shall follow you, Holmes. Well, the case is solved and we shall be heading home. May we have two tickets to London, please? Right away, Wood. Wait, wait a minute. You've solved the case? In a manner of speaking, can you believe that the rescue service miraculously saved one of the Chileans who were on board the train? The police have ordered his immediate escort to London on the next train. He, he pulled through, then? He's alive? Yes, by extreme good fortune. His condition is quite serious, and the method of transportation has its risk, but he will be held securely by the doctor and police officers. The gentleman carries some vital information on this case. I am sure of it. Ah, really? Your station will be famous, Mr. Duff. The journalist will be here before you know it. Goodbye, sir. Good goodbye, gentlemen. Gentlemen, you are under arrest. Caramba! You traitor! You double-crossed me! Good shot, Watson. I always knew you were a talented marksman. I didn't want another life lost in this case, Holmes. Oh my god! I thought I was a dead man. You shouldn't be so glad about it. You'll be up before the judge. Your testimony will be of great importance to the investigation. I would remind you that your cooperation will be the best way to ease your sentence. By the way, Watson, would you be so kind as to give me some shooting lessons later on? Yes, but not in our sitting room, and not with you wearing a blindfold. <laughs>